Hello, my name is Todd Miranda, and the purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate how to use the Navigation Service class to navigate within a navigation-based WPF Windows application. Let's begin by creating a new WPF Windows application project, and we'll call this WPF Navigation Service. And the first thing we're going to do, since we want to build a navigation-based application, is we're actually going to get rid of the window class, and we're going to add a page. And we'll just leave it default page one. Now a little bit of plumbing that we have to do. Let's go ahead and just remove the window class from our project. And let's go into our application and tell it to use page one as our starting page. Now to be most correct, we should probably create a navigation window and have our page be hosted within our navigation window. But if you don't create a navigation window explicitly, WPF will create one for you if you're referencing a page class. So we're going to go ahead and utilize that since we don't need to respond to any of the lifecycle events of a navigation window. For purpose of this presentation, we'll just use a page class and let WPF create the navigation window for us. We're going to change our grid to a stack panel. And this is just because stack panels are really easy to use for presentation purposes because they don't have any other kind of formatting other than just stacking things in our window vertically or horizontally. Now let's go ahead while we're at it and let's create a new page. We're going to need something to navigate to. And we'll start in our new page. We'll give it a title. Our second page. And we're going to set the window height and window width. Since we can't specify the width and height of a page directly, we're going to use the window height and window width, which affects the navigation window container for our page. And we're going to leave this grid. We're just going to simply put a text block in here. We'll set a font size that's a little bit larger so that we can read it more easily. And we're just going to put, you have arrived at page 2. And that's all we're going to do for page 2. We're not going to use it for any navigation. We'll use our page 1 for navigation. Let's do the same thing here. Let's set a title and set our window height and window width. Normally we'd put a button in here to use for our presentations, but let's do something a little bit fun. Let's create a border and we'll set the border brush to some color. Let's use, use blue. We'll set border thickness to, we'll say, 3. Let's set a width and height on this of 100 pixels so that we effectively have a square area. And let's set a background to a little bit lighter blue color, maybe an aquamarine. And we're going to use this for our navigation, so let's respond to the mouse down event of our border. And we'll just simply call this mouse down. All right, in our border, we're going to have one element. We're going to have a text block. And it's going to be horizontally aligned to the center and vertically aligned to the center. And we're just going to put in here, go to page 2. Now let's go to our code behind for this page 1.class and we're going to create a handler for our button mouse down. And we're just going to use the routed event args here because we're really not going to use any spe specific mouse down event arguments. We're not going to put anything in here yet. Let's just build our solution, make sure we don't have any errors, and let's view it. All right. Now, we said we were going to do something a little bit fun, so let's make our border a little bit odd-shaped. 
And this really doesn't have anything to do with the navigation service. It just kind of makes things a little bit fun. So we're going to set the corner radius of our border to some, some pretty large values. Let's just say 80, I don't know, 35, 75, and maybe 16. We'll see what that does for us. Okay, so now that we have effectively a button that we're going to be able to use, let's see how we use the navigation service in our button mouse down event. There's a number of ways to use the navigation service class. The first of which is to call the static navigation service dot navigate dot get navigation service method. So let's take a look at that. We're going to say navigation service nav equals navigation service dot get navigation service and we're going to pass the page that we want to get the navigation service for. In this case we'll just do this. Now that we have the instance of our navigation service we can call nav dot navigate method. And the navigate method has a number of overloads. We're going to look at two of the most commonly used overloads for that. The first of which is just simply a new page 2. So we pass an instance of the page that we want to navigate to. So let's run this. And there's our oddly shaped button that we created. And if we click on this, we'll navigate to our page 2. And there you see our, you have arrived at page 2. Now we can click this back button or the forward button to go back and forth between our pages and note that if we click here we see we can go back to our first page which is the title that we gave our first page. Okay, so we've seen one way to use the navigation service to navigate in a WPF application. Let's take a look at another way. There's another overload of the navigate method that we can use and this other overload is simply to do a new URI and we'll specify here page 2. This time we have to specify the page 2.xaml, the full file name, and we're going to tell it that this is a relative URI, so it's going to be relative to our current path, and we do that by specifying URI kind dot relative. So this is the other overload to our navigate method. Let's take a look at how that works. And again we should get the same result if we click on our border, and we do, we go to you have arrived at page 2. We don't have to use the navigation service dot get navigation service if we want to get the navigation service for our current page. And the reason we don't have to do that is our current page does have a reference to the navigation service exposed as a property. So let's take a look at that. Let's do this dot navigation service. And if we reference it this way, then we can go directly to the navigate method and we can specify as we did before our new and we'll do new page 2 we'll use that particular overload and that means that we can get rid of this uh, navigation service get navigation service and we'll comment this out because we'll come back again and we'll, we'll show that we can use this same overload with our local reference to the get navigation service. So let's run this make sure that we get the same exact result and we do so obviously we could use this overload as well and run that and we'll get the same result. So you see that there's a number of different ways to approach using the navigation service. There's one additional way that we can access the navigation service to be able to navigate to another page and that's through some properties on the actual navigation service itself. So let's take a look at that. This dot navigation service dot content. If we set the content property to a new page 2 instance, this is effectively the same, setting the content property is effectively the same as the overload for navigate that takes a new instance of the page 2 method. Let's take a look at that. And sure enough we should get the same result. And we do. So we can also set a property that's the equivalent of this overload and we're going to copy this right out of here 
and instead of setting the content we're going to do navigation service dot source this time we'll set the source and the source takes a URI very similar to this overload for the navigate method let's put our semicolon there and run this and again same result Now, there's no real reason why you would use the property syntax to do this as opposed to using the navigate method. Matter of fact, if you're reading the code for readability's sake and just because of kind of the standard way we're used to doing things, using the navigate method is probably a little bit more intuitive. So there's nothing wrong with using these properties, but the navigate method is probably a little more intuitive. And if you come back and for readability's sake, looking through the code, it would probably make a little more sense to use that. But they function exactly the same, do the exact same thing. So as you can see, there's a number of ways to use the navigation service to navigate in a navigation-based WPF application.